Hey beauties, hope you guys are all doing very well today. Um, so today, I've kind of cycled through all of the, the palettes that I bought recently that I really wanted to do first impressions of. So now I'm going back again and trying to find some of the palettes that I purchased and I talked about in hauls, but I didn't do a first impression of just because I bought a lot at the same time and they kind of got thrown to the wayside. That sounds horrible, but I have a problem, so. We all know that, I'm not hiding it, but the palette that I decided to do today is the Zion palette from Hip Dot. Um, if you guys have been with the channel for a while, this is a little case that it comes into. It comes in like a nice little cardboard cover. If you guys have been with the channel for the, a while, then you probably saw me do my Memorial Day weekend haul. I bought so much stuff that weekend, stuff for the house, a ton of makeup. I shopped a lot of like um, individual sellers, like from direct from company websites, which I don't normally do. I normally buy through Ulta, so I get points. But um, one of the, the places that I bought directly from was Hip Dot, and they did 25% off, and I wound up getting their big bundle set that came with five of their best-selling palettes. And this is one of the ones that I picked up. Now, it's a gorgeous palette. I've only used the Napa in that collection so far. I did it in one of the videos, but I didn't really talk about the palette at all because I was talking about Ipsy when I did it. I loved it. I really was just, the formula was great. It was easy to blend out. The, the look turned out gorgeous. So I'm really excited to actually test out a palette on camera where this is really the focus of the, the video. So this is the Zion palette. I opted to go with this one because this is one of the options for the Boxy Charm base box. It actually, when I did the review of, um, like what the spoilers were for September in August, I said like, oh, I, I won't be upset if I get that palette, but then I remembered it's a Lux month, so I'll be getting a boxy Lux, and I don't think it's gonna be um, one of the options in the Lux. So I shouldn't get it, but I did wanna go ahead and do a review of it to give you guys an idea of how the, the palette turns out today. So here we are doing that. I will give you the preface. I am slightly tipsy because it's my day off, and I only drink on my days off now, and I get very few of them, so like, <laughs> What will I say? Who knows? We don't, nobody knows. The The plan for today, because I put on my little head uh, head uh, band over here that I love so much, the like glittery, metallic-y, snakeskin type looking one, um, because I used my straightener brush and I burned my hair four times and I said, I'm not doing anything else and I don't want to fix my bangs. So here we are. Yeah, so that was the, the choice. And I said, because of that, let's do some purple looks because this is a really purpley kind of, um, tone to it. So I'm going to do on my lid, we're going to do, this is Whisper. Um, I'm going to blend it out with Wildfire, which is this really beautiful kind of lavender shade. I'm going to go in with Sandstone as the blending brow shade, like to get up to my brow line. And then I think I'm going to do um, a little bit of darkening. Um, I'm going to use Vibration. So it's going to be kind of like a dark brown. We're going to do that on my under eye and we're going to do that um, as like a darkening color out here. And then I'm going to do, of course, like a half cut crease like I normally do with these kind of looks. And I think I'm actually gonna go in with Virgin. I was really thinking about doing Surreal, which is this pretty purple glitter shade, but I think Virgin's gonna make it like a light, a lighter toned look, and that's kind of what I'm going for. So, so yeah, so, so purple and brown is kind of what the aesthetic is going to look like today. Let's do it. Let's, let's do this. And then we're big bang. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, really quickly, if you haven't subscribed, maybe do that. We're fun. We do lots of videos. I do lots of stuff like this. And then I also do unboxings and I also just talk about weird things a lot. So like, okay. Ow. Oh, I hit the desk. Oh, that was like the not funny, but like where it is funny, but it's not. Like, oh, I think I have radioactive powers now. <laughs> Nikki's like, explain how that happened. We'll see what happened was I slammed my knee, my, my knee. I slammed my elbow into the desk and it broke a bone and inside my bone marrow there was radioactivity the whole time because we all know I'm not normal. And now it's just like tingling through. Like I, I don't think I can use this hand. I don't, I'm just gonna have to do the whole thing left-handed. No, I'm not doing that. What's your superpower? It's not metal elbows. <laughs> <laughs> I broke my elbow cap and then all of us, what is your elbow cap called by the, what is the term for that? I think that's just your elbow. It's just your elbow. Yeah, it's just your elbow. It's well, that's true. Yeah, I don't really have a cap on it like you do in your knee. Anatomy. <laughs> anyway, I'm moving on. All right, because we actually have something to talk about. It's not going to be like the um, the donut video where I just was exhausted and just rambled the whole time. We actually do have a topic for today to discuss. And it's a, it's a fabulous topic, let me tell you. So last night, actually, we'll start back like Thursday this week. Nikki saw something and it was like a small clip of a, of a movie a very famous movie. And he had to watch it in film school because it's like in the history books is like the worst movie ever created. It's called The Room. It's by Tommy Wiseau. Wiseau. What? 
Wizo. Wizo, Wizo. I think it's Wizo. Everybody I've heard talk about it besides you says Wizo. So maybe fix yourself. <laughs> Anyway, um, so yeah, so it's by Tommy Wiseau. The plot of the movie is, it's a movie. Uh, they, there really is not very much of a plot. I mean, there is, I don't want to completely discredit it, but there really isn't, like there's not. I don't even know how to begin. So so Nikki, he sees this clip and goes, we got to watch the room, you need to see it. And I was like, I've heard a, I've heard about it from him. And I was like, I'm worried, I'm, I want to know, but I'm also worried. And he was like, well, we should do, there's a drinking game, we should do a drinking game. And I said, all right. All right, I'm up for drinking always. So let's do this. So last night we sat down. I was not, I, we had been, cause I was off yesterday as well. So I, I had been, you know, drinking a little bit all day, but I really wasn't like tipsy at all. I was pretty good. I was like, you know, in, in I had I had my, my wits about me, if you will. He says, all right, let's start this game. He gives me the rules. The rules were every time uh, they say, oh, hi, you take a drink. Every time they, show a picture of a spoon, you take a drink. Every time a sex scene happens, you take a drink. And let me tell you, I drank way too frequently about that. That was unnecessary, but anyway, not the point. Anyway, and then what was the last one? Uh, anytime oh, a football was thrown. Anytime a football was thrown, you take a drink. And then if you, they did a pan of the Golden Gate Bridge, you chugged. And there's one scene, the rooftop scene, that you have to finish your beer during that. By the end of this movie, I was, wasted i was very drunk i think i think i drank in the hour and a half long movie and let me tell you it feels like it's about two years long it's not an hour and a half feeling it is it i we were halfway through and i was like this has got to be almost over right and he's like no like we've only been watching for 45 minutes and i i felt like i'd aged about 10 years now that being said i thoroughly enjoyed it and i have not stopped thinking about it since it is very much consumed me as a person but it's not good it's not for good reasons it's just it's very fascinating so we start the game you have to understand, I would recommend kind of, well, no, I would just recommend watch it. Just jump in, just watch it to understand. But if you know anything about Tommy Wiseau, like this, he's not acting. He's just playing himself the whole movie. He wrote, directed, produced, and starred in this movie. And it had a pretty decent budget. It was, it aired in, it was released to the public in 2003. I think they started filming in 2001. He had like a $6 million budget on it. Like, I don't, I don't, as somebody who's worked in indie, film for since I graduated and while I was in school like not many people can just produce six million dollars to make their own movie let me tell you that's why we're doing a YouTube channel because it ain't cheap to make it in the movie industry y'all I don't know I don't know where he came up with them nobody knows where he came up with the money from it's a mystery just like his original birth location and his age but that's part of the fun of it so Okay, so off camera, I just went ahead and finished up the the eye base because I was talking a lot, um, which always seems to happen when I have things to talk about while I'm doing my makeup because distraction. Okay, so yeah, so I finished it off. It applied really smoothly. I really like the shade. Very, um, very nice kind of like, gives me like aubergine vibes or like eggplant vibes. I really like it. Very pretty. Um, I think it's gonna look really nice with this. Um, little lavender, lavender-y color that we've got uh, to work with. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump into that one as well. Um, and that one again is Wild River, so. Anyway, so back to the movies. We'll just jump into it. So Tommy plays this character, Johnny. The acting is like the most unnatural thing I've ever seen. I, I'm really not trying to be mean, cause it, but it, I think the whole world kind of agrees. Like it's just, there's nothing organic about it. Like one of the big things in, in theater, school when I was in college was like, like all my theater professors would be like, you know, you, you need to take time and, and process information and then respond because you don't know, like in real life, you don't know what you're going to say. You have to take time to think about it. And, and as an actor, so many times you want to just be like, I need to get my line out. And that's just so not organic. Yeah, there was none of this thought process there. It was literally just like line, line, line. They'd be stepping over each other's lines. It'd be like, if they paused, it was because somebody was like, hey, pause there. And they were like, can I go? Like it was like that whole, that's the whole, the every, almost every actor in that that movie is like that. So, so it's rough. So it's, it's just understand, like it's not, you're gonna sit down and you're gonna be like, what am I watching? The answer is I don't know, but stick with it cause it's worth it. He, he comes home from work, Johnny comes home from work and he's got a girlfriend named Lisa 
And he's like, I brought you a dress because I just come home and I bring you presents every day because I love you so much and I'm just awesome and I care about you so much. And she's like, oh my God, thank you. And then they're like creepy neighbor kid shows up and he's just like, hey, I'm just gonna come into your house and like be weird and it's, it is what it is. Like they're just like, yeah, you do this every day. So hey, good to see you again. They go upstairs, Johnny and Lisa, and they're like, hey, we're gonna go take a nap. For some reason, Denny, who, I swear to God, when the video, or when the movie started, it was Danny was his name. By the end of it, it's Denny. So I don't know if they were just saying it weird at the beginning or if they just mid through, like midway through filming, they were like, we're just gonna switch it to Denny and nobody will pick up on it. But it, I noticed it. I was like, wait, are they calling him Denny now? And Nikki was like, yeah. And I was like, I, was it not Danny? And he was like, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure it was Danny. So. Okay, so uh, so Denny decides like he's, they're like, hey, we're gonna go take a nap and they just leave him in the living room. They're not like, hey, let's like show you out. Like they're just like, we're gonna go take a nap. And he's just like, all right, I'm gonna eat this apple on your table and then I'm gonna follow you up the stairs. Cause that's not weird. So they're like having a pillow fight up there cause foreplay, I guess. He just like joins in. He's just like, hey, I brought my own pillow. And they're like, <laughs> literally that's the laugh. That's the whole laugh, yes. <laughs> And then they're like, all right, but like really we're like trying to like do some stuff. So could you leave? And he's like, yeah, sure, whatever. So he leaves and then they, they proceed to have the first sex scene of the movie within minute five. All sorts of uncomfortable, let me tell you. There's like a, there's some rose petals that are like peeled off and sprinkled on like bare breasts. There's a, a very nice shot of his, his of uh, Tommy Wiseau's butt just yeah, it's, uh, it is weird, let me tell you. It was, I was like, I don't wanna watch this. And Nikki was like, it just gets worse from here. So they, they do this, they spend, you know, a good, you know, five minutes on the first sex scene. They make it, you know, seem like they're so in love. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah. So they're so in love, it's, I drooled, sorry. I'm like trying to like mop up this little bit of spittle that is upon the, my lip. So yeah, so you're like, okay. So they're like, it's beautiful. They're, you know, they're in love, they're engaged. They're, they're living their best lives. No. He goes to work the next day and this bitch is like, God, I hate him. I hate him, mom. I can't do this anymore. And her mom's like, but he's got that shmoney. And what are you gonna do? You can't, you can't live on your own. You're, no, you don't have any skills. You can't, you're not qualified to live as an adult. You need somebody to take care of you and he's got money. So you need to stay with him. And she was just like, I mean, I guess mom. And then she proceeds to call who we find out is his best friend and bitch to him like, my mom's a dumb <laughs> bitch. I mean, she didn't say ah. but she did say she's a dumb bitch and she doesn't have any right to tell me what to do with my life. She didn't know anything. I'm perfectly qualified to live on my own and make my own decisions, even though I don't seem to have a job. So like the idea of me being able to support myself does seem a little bit ridiculous, but whatever, we're not gonna talk about that. So yeah, so she calls who we find out is Tommy's best friend. No, Johnny. God, it's so confusing <laughs> trying to keep <laughs> I don't know whose name it is. It's Tommy Wiseau and his character is Johnny. So if I say one of the two names, you know who I'm talking about. So she's like, I'm gonna call who we know is Johnny's best friend now. Now in the future, we know that. But at the time we're just like, who is this man that she's calling? And this man's name is Mark. My dude, Mark is kind of like, why are you calling me? And she's just like, my mom's such a bitch. I just want to live my own life. What do you think I should do? Should I leave? And he's just kind of like, what? I mean, I guess. And the weird thing is, is they make it when they establish this phone call. I don't know why I'm analyzing this movie. Nikki's like, don't do it. Cause it doesn't make sense, but I'm just gonna point it out. When they establish this phone call, they really make it seem like they're already in some sort of a relationship, like an illicit affair. But then when he comes up, she asks him to come over. And so he comes over and he, she like has to persuade him. Like she has to be like, I'm in love with you. And like, we need to do this. And he's just like, he's my best friend. I can't do that to him. But they like literally when he calls, like when she calls him, she's like, hey baby. Like it's, it's weird, I, I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but I'm thinking, I thought about it last night and now I'm vocalizing it. Cause I, it's just, that was like a moment where I was like, what's happening? So yeah, so like I said, I don't know why I'm bothering to analyze it. Cause it's not like any of this makes sense, but it just it bothered me. So yes, so here we are. Really quickly, the lavender shade, freaking gorgeous. Absolutely just love it. And it, there's so little fallout. Like it really just does such a great job of like wherever you put it, it kind of just sticks. And a lot of makeup companies, even if they're great quality, don't have that ability. So I really am very impressed with what's happening right now on, on the eyeballs. Okay, really quickly off camera, I went ahead and did some of the blending out um, with the sandstone 
uh, which is that neutral shade. And then I also uh, added just a little bit more of Wild River just because that, that lavender shade um, is so beautiful. And actually I have to say the sandstone did a really great job of kind of covering any sort of like issues I had. So it kind of honestly muted that shade a little bit and I wanted to keep the integrity of it. So I did add just a touch more as well, but I did that off camera cause I keep rambling, so. So yeah, so now we're gonna go in and I'm gonna go ahead and do, um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and do um, under eye. I'm going to do a little bit of whisper and I'm going to do a little bit of vibration, which is that dark brown that we'll use after we do the cut crease. Then I'll move into the cut crease and then we'll go ahead and do the glitter pigment and the darkening shade as well. Um, so yeah, that's our game plan. Okay, back to this um, truly brilliant movie. So so Mark's over, he's chilling there. He, she's like, I'm so in love with you. And he's just like, bruh. You can't, I can, he's my best friend. Like, what do you want me to do? And she's like, I want you to bone me on the stairs. So he does. Yeah, it's uh, equally as uncomfortable, just with less nudity this time. But yeah, so they're just sitting on this like, actually really cool, the apartment that it's set in is actually really cool. It's like a two story loft is what I would call it. Cause it's like a one room and there's like a kitchen and then there's like a living room. And then there's like this kind of like fireman type spiral staircase that's metal that just goes up to like an open bedroom. And I, I'm into, I like the loft. I like that. That was probably my favorite thing in the whole movie. But anyway, the point of that explanation was they, uh, they decided to just, you know, why, why walk the extra 15 feet up to the bed and just like, let's do it on the stairs. So that's what they do. So now officially, I don't know. Cause like I said, I was unclear at the first part. Were they already in an affair? Were they not? Who knows? But now they are, we've, we've now gotten, you know, visual confirmation that there is some illicit stuff happening. Why did you do this to me? Why? So now they're they're uh, entangled, if you will. They're now entangled. Entanglement. Of course, you know, poor Johnny over here, he's just, you know, doing his best, living his life, working in the very competitive computer business, trying to make it, and he really thinks she loves him. <laughs> that comic, <laughs> that comic killed Nikki. You have to watch the movie, please, and you'll understand how funny that reference was. So yeah, they're, you know, they're they're now entangled and- An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> He's oblivious and, and it just, it do be like that. So, so now mom comes back and poor mom, man. Mom's the voice of reason in this movie and the daughter, Lisa, just does not give a single f <laughs> Just doesn't care what mom has to say, I, literally. So she has a conversation with mom. And mom's, you know, once again, standing by like, you know, Johnny's gonna provide for you. He loves you, he treats you well. And she's like, no, he doesn't, he hits me. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think domestic abuse is something that we should just be joking about or using as some way to make, you know, people feel bad for you, but this is what Lisa does. So they really have done just an excellent job of making Lisa the least likable character she possibly could be. She has zero redeeming qualities. At, not, at one point did I watch anything she did and I was like, I understand where she's coming from. She's literally just a bitch. That is the de that is the depth of the writing of this. It's just, she's just awful. So, and there are some people out there who are just awful, I guess. So, I mean, okay. But anyway, so, so yeah, so she's like, he hits me and mom's kind of like, well, but does he pay your bills? <laughs> All right, mom. And then mom is like, well, you know, at least you have somebody to take care of you because I don't have anybody to take care of me and I'm dying. Nobody wants to help me and I'm dying. She's like, you're not dying, mom. And mom's like, no, legitimately, I'm dying. I, I definitely have breast cancer, so. I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. And nobody reacts to it. That's it. Lisa doesn't go, oh my God. She doesn't say, are you, oh no, that's terrible. She's just like, so, but Johnny though, like he's a shithead. So what am I gonna do? <laughs> like that's, there we are. Okay, so yeah, so that happens. Well, then Johnny goes to a flower shop and um, I'm just gonna have Nikki show you that scene because I cannot properly describe to you how beautiful everything that happens in it is. Hi. Can I help you? Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. Here you go. That's me. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. So, uh, so he goes to the flower shop. He gets those, you know, gorgeous roses for Lisa because he just is always bringing her presents because he truly loves her and she's awful. Uh, he comes home and he's just like, hey, I brought you some flowers, but I had a really terrible day, but I still stopped to get you flowers because I love you so much. And she's like, why'd you have a terrible day? And he was like, I didn't get my promotion in the competitive computer industry. Ugh. They promised me that three months ago and I saved them so much money. Ugh. You're right. The computer business is too competitive. 
Which is funny because then later they talk about how he works in the banking industry. So, <laughs> so my man has just a lot of high paying jobs, I guess, which is, okay. Lisa decides, all right, well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna order a pizza. I've done it. I, I knew you were gonna have a bad day and I didn't wanna cook dinner because I don't cook dinner. So I ordered a pizza. So she orders a pizza. And then she convinces him to get drunk off of what is the largest pour of, I, I guess it's scotch, and whiskey scotch of some sort or whatever. The largest pour I've ever seen. It was like half a damn rocks glass filled, no ice, nothing. So I guess it's just hot scotch and then topped with vodka, which uh, we watched, what is it? The Cinema Sins? We watched the Cinema Sins and they called it Scotchka. And I was like, oof. <laughs> Yikes. So yeah, so they um, they get drunk off that. And then she uh, she's like, you know, have sex with me again. And he's like, I don't know. And she's like, come on. And he's like, okay. So they just literally take the same scene from the first time they had sex and they just use it again in the film because on, on a movie set, time is money and you don't have time to film multiple sex scenes with the same person. That's just stupid. So they just reuse the same scene. So, uh, so yeah, so they do it again. And then, you know, this is really where I start to see chaos ensuing, in my opinion, because you've got, now she's, you know, one, she's had sex with two different guys in one day. That's busy. That's, I, I don't, I, that's a lot of stamina. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm just saying, that's two different guys, a whole lot going on there, so. You gotta think about what each one likes and it's just, it's busy. That's that's a real entanglement in my opinion. I got into an entanglement. Yeah. I, there's so much happens in this movie. There's so much to talk about and I just can't even explain it. At some point, Denny, Danny, whatever we're gonna call him, he gets like mixed up in drugs and there's a drug dealer on the roof who's like gonna kill him with a gun. It's my money, Denny. <laughs> everybody, not not just one or two, not just Johnny stumbles upon it. I mean, every damn person, every damn character in this movie, some bro on the bus, some guy who was, you know, on uh, standing on the street corner at the beginning. No, I'm not kidding, I'm kidding about that. But like literally it was Lisa, her mom, Johnny, Mark, they all show up while, you know, Denny is about to get his ass kicked by this, you know, drug dealer. And they're like, oh my God, oh my God. And so of course, you know, this gun wielding drug dealer is just of course immediately taken down by unarmed Mark and Johnny. We're authorizing ourselves to subdue you. And then they subdue him and then they take him to the police station. And that takes all of two minutes. And while they're gone for the two minutes, we have Lisa's mom who does not know Denny at all, like screaming and crying about like why he's involved with drugs and like how he could be so stupid and, and all this stuff. And then Lisa's awkwardly crying cause she is, let me tell you, she's a weird ass crier. And it's just, I why, why was it necessary? We don't know. So then there's this random couple. I don't know if I'm going in order or not. There's so much that happens. There's this random couple at some point that apparently just use the apartment, um, Lisa and uh, Johnny's apartment to have sex. They're just like, you know, we need a good place to hook up and it's not like either one of us have houses, so we're gonna come to yours. And uh, yeah, they, they show up and they, you know, do that. You see the, I don't even know how to describe it, like the most uncomfortable looking blowjob face I've ever seen in my whole life. It was like, like all sorts of like. <laughs> and it was, she wasn't even, it wasn't even active. What does that mean? I mean, the blowjob haven't e hasn't even like commenced yet. She was like not even, she was unbuttoning his pants and his face was looking like that. No sexual act had actually begun and his face was just like, so why? I don't, he was into it though. He's like, yes, I love it when people touch my belt. That feels so good. Yeah, so, so this is all, this is all happening. There's a tuxedo that everybody's in a tuxedo. At one point playing football, there's a, I just, there's so much that happened. There's just so much. What am I missing, Nate? What do I need to cover still? Well, they randomly introduce characters. Oh, all the time for this, like one yep, scene. Yep, the, that couple that comes in, you see the girl. One more time. Two, more well, time. aren't they at the party? Yeah, that's the next time. Okay, so like two or three more times. And you also Either. see the guy one more time because he talks to Johnny. So you see them again, but it's not in like scenes that make any sense. The, the guy in particular. Uh, but then they have a party and that guy isn't there, but the girl is. 
So you think like this is her boyfriend and she's like, you know, hooking up with him all the time. You'd think she'd bring him to a party, but I guess- It's somebody else's apartment. But I guess like, no, that, nope. Yep. That, that, why would they do that? That's silly. Why would- Then you meet a psychologist and he's like one of Johnny's friends. He, you see him playing football, but you don't see him again either. Yeah, he's, he's in the football playing tuck scene and he like awkwardly falls and he's like, I'm done with this shit, which that's the whole mood of 2020, let me tell you. Yeah, that was it. Like they introduce him and it's so funny cause they're like the whole, the whole point of like he, his psychologist friend who happens to be a psychologist just cause we all have psychologist friends. And so he's just like, Johnny's sitting there talking to him about like his issues. Cause he's like, you know, why is Lisa lying about me hitting her? Oh yeah, I think I forgot to mention that he, he finds out that she, I guess, I, they don't explain how he finds out that she's telling people that he's hitting her, but he just finds out and like comes up onto the roof and it's just like. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's both. Ah! I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. And <laughs> it stands down the greatest scene. Uh, I think it's the second greatest scene in that movie. It's probably the most iconic scene. What's this? What, the flower to shop me, scene? No, to me, the best scene in the movie is when Denny, Danny, whatever his name is, is on the roof. Getting, oh, with the, getting, about to get killed? Yes. I think that, because that whole scene is on the roof and so much happens, but nothing happens. But nothing happens. Because it's never talked about again. Yeah, nobody ever talk, goes back to, like, it's like the breast cancer thing. It's like, we're not gonna talk about how, like, Denny, it, like, was dealing drugs or why he needed money for drugs or any, we, we're just gonna be, like, drugs. <laughs> and, and, like, I think, Denny has the most, I'll call it character development, but it isn't. I Would you though? I, I kind of would because we find out that Denny is an orphan and Johnny care, takes care of him. We find out that he's in college and Johnny is paying his tuition. We find out that he's into drugs. Somehow, something is going on with drugs. We're but how, drugs. how involved with drugs? We don't know no, that, we don't but. Know selling or buying or deal, I, I don't know. I don't know why he's buying drugs or why the drug dealer is giving him drugs on loan. If Johnny's paying for his whole life, like why does he need money? Yes, but like, like what, okay. What he, and he never says how much money he owes. He just says that he owes him a lot of money. Uh, but he's in jail now, so it doesn't matter. Well, I don't, I don't really want to talk about the very end. I don't want you guys to be, I want you guys to go watch this because it's, it's worth the watch and I don't want to spoil it for you. But I, th I personally think that he has the most quote unquote character development. We just find out more about him than any other character in this entire movie. That is probably true. That is probably true. Cause we don't get backstories on literally anybody. Nope. Like the most we know about Lisa and Johnny is that they've been together for five years. Oh, and that's the other thing that like was so frustrating is their ah! wedding date kept changing. At the beginning of the movie, they're like, we're getting married next week. And then like later in the movie, it's like, we're getting married, married next month. And then like three weeks later in the movie development, it's still like, we're getting married next month. So like, it's almost, it's like me and Nikki's engagement. We just keep saying we're getting married, but we never give anybody a f date, which is like, we're engaged. We've been engaged since 2016. When are we going to say I do? I don't know. Yep. I don't know. Keep guessing. Put, where's your, where's your money pool on the, the marriage day? Where's your money pool at? So yeah, that's all I'm going to say about the movie. I highly recommend going to talk about it or going to talk about it. I highly recommend watching it to understand what we're talking about. That's what I was trying to say. It didn't come out correctly because words are hard and uh, I just keep drinking. So it's not like I'm getting any more sober. So yeah, so really, really fascinating. It's not good. I'm not gonna pretend like it's good. I'm not gonna be like, oh my God, you should go watch it. Cause it's just, it's gonna, it did change me though. I'm not gonna lie. It really did change me. But I do want to give, I want to save some time cause we're getting close to the end of the look, but I want to save just a little bit of time to talk about. We watched The Disaster Artist, which is James and Dave Franco's take on the making of that movie. And that was fantastic. I, it was so well done. And like James Franco plays Tommy Wiseau and he nails his accent. He nails like all of it. They recreate scenes of the movie and they do it so well. I was talking to Nikki and I think really the best way, the, the I'm glad the way that I watched it, I watched it. Cause I think you need to see the room before you see Disaster Artist. You don't have to, but I would recommend it because I think it's 
good to kind of know the movie before going into it. But after watching Disaster Artist where it talks about like all the issues and everything that was happening, I think it's important to go back and rewatch it so that you kind of get an understanding of like what exactly, <laughs> what exactly the circumstances were and like everybody involved in the film besides Tommy Wiseau, like what was happening. Cause like, I think everybody at some point kind of had the epiphany like as they're wor working on this film that it's just not gonna be good. <laughs> But at that point, you're so into it. You're just like, we just gotta muscle through it. And that's, I mean, that's a very hard thing. Like, it's like, oh, here we are, but I don't wanna be, but here we are, so. The disaster artist does a really good job of just showing the mystery. Cause I think that's why the room is such a cult classic is because there's so much mystery surrounding the movie and surrounding Tommy. Yes, I totally and agree. I think, I think disaster artist does a phenomenal job of explaining the mystery behind a movie because you 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 know you can see behind the scenes things for all movies you can look into it and there's there's plenty of interviews and stuff about movies being made and you can find out the intricacies of them but not the room the room uh the actor who played mark his name is greg mm -hmm. he wrote a book about the making of the room called in, disaster artist mm -hmm, in 2014 i want to say and he kind of explains everything but, mm -hmm. but there's still so much mystery that like even he doesn't know and he was johnny's best i mean he was tommy's best friend before this movie was made and that was why they went to hollywood and decided to make this movie together to try and you know create their own career more or less because the industry is incredibly hard i never wanted to go and deal with the auditions and stuff that's literally why we decided to, to create a youtube channel because i was like i don't want to have to deal with all of the bullshit because there is a lot of bullshit that goes into it there's a lot of we all know it's a murky it's a murky industry and it's not everybody involved with it is murky but there's a lot of murky people out there and trying to find your way in into it and and navigate through it and you know keep yourself and your integrity and everything you stand for that's a that's a challenging thing so that's why we ultimately decided to create a youtube cha channel where we could be in control of our own content and still be doing stuff that we where it involves nikki's love of filmmaking and my love of of acting and being in front of cameras and talking and, and doing all that so it's it, it is a tricky you know area so to i understand the desire to go in and make your own movie just be like screw hollywood in the system and the brown nosing and everything that goes into it and let's let's make our own shit but it's it didn't turn out as, well as planned it went awry at some point so all right so off camera did a little bit of touching up did my mascara you guys i have used the hip dot palettes two different ones only twice i hate that it is terrible this is, I'm not, no bullshit at all. This has got to be one of the best brands that I've used in a, in a long time. I mean, there are some indie brands that I really love. I really like Glam Light. This, the, where I put the color down, it stays. It blends out super well. It matches super well. There is virtually no fallout. There's very little fallout even on the pan. Oh, that didn't work. But like, I don't know if you guys can see very well or not, but there just doesn't look like there's any fallout on the pan either. I love Hip Dot. I need to, I need to use them more. I'm really excited. I really want to get, I've been looking, I was kind of hoping my brother had like an old SpongeBob shirt or something for like when we did this, because I got the, the Sandy Cheeks palette and I have the SpongeBob palette. I really want to do a look with that. I haven't found one. So I may just order a SpongeBob shirt because I love SpongeBob because like who doesn't? So, but I, there's a lot more that I want to do with Hip Dot. I think it needs to be, um, a definitely a more integrated part of my makeup, my regular makeup, because I really do just kind of forget about it. And it's so, so freaking quality. So highly recommend if you guys get this in your boxy charm, that is an awesome palette. I highly, highly recommend playing with it. It's, I really like it. It's, I love, I love the look. I love the look that we created today. So yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me uh, talk about the room. I, like I said, I also really, I would suggest going to watch it. It's not good, but it's, it's worth watching. It definitely changed me as a person. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, I know I said do that, but like, do it. You stayed this long, might as well, right? So yeah, other than that, I hope you guys are all doing well. You're safe, healthy, and you have a wonderful day and stay girly with the dark twist.